If you've been watching the channel for any time, you know that I'm a huge fan of 300 Blackout and always on the lookout for really good guns chambered in it. Sadly, so many fall short and are really just a complete waste of time. One new offering did emerge from the bleak darkness of subpar 300 Blackout offerings recently and really caught my attention. The Paladin from GQ Armory. These guys really did everything right, kept the features they liked from popular 300 Blackout offerings, and made some improvements where they could. One of the best things about 300 Blackout is the caliber is made for shorter barrels. That means the guns can be compact, lightweight, without sacrificing ballistics. GQ Armory has capitalized on that with the Paladin. The Paladin is a little over 20 inches collapsed, 25 and a half inches fully extended, and weighs in at 4 pounds 9 ounces. The owners of GQ Armory have always admired companies like Q and Nevesky for the quality and innovation that they represent, but went their own way with the design of the Paladin. They saw what they did with their compact 300 blackout guns and felt they could make some changes that some people would appreciate. They wanted to keep the compact size and the ultra lightweight feel of the Honey Badger. They also wanted to add some of the higher end features of the Noveski. They wanted to do all of this, allow the gun to hinge open and have a standard AR recoil system. A pretty tall order, but I feel the GQ Armory pulled it off quite well. Some people may not realize this, but to get the Honey Badger and the Noveski offerings as short as possible, they had to sacrifice the ability of the gun to hinge open, like a traditional AR. You kind of have to pull both pins and slide the upper forward. Is this a huge deal? Maybe not. But I will tell you, you do miss it when the ability to hinge open your AR is gone. It is one of the design features that makes the AR so great, it's so easily serviceable. That is why it is cool that GQ Armory set out from the beginning to make the best possible offering they could without sacrificing that feature. A great gun is more than the sum of its parts, but I have to tell you that GQ Armory has put all of the best parts available into the Paladin. They scoured the industry and got the best parts where they were available and designed other parts from the ground up to make the Paladin one of the most formidable 300 blackout guns of all time. Let's go from front to back and take a look at what all goes into the Paladin. First off, it ships with a Q Cherry Bomb, which is a very good suppressor attachment. And more importantly, that is sitting on a Q Honey Badger barrel. Q has done some impressive things, but one of the absolute best things Q has ever made is this barrel. First off, 1 in 5 twist. You really need this faster twist rate to get the RPMs up and stabilize those heavy subsonic 300 blackout bullets. 1 in 5 twist rate is necessary to give subsonic 300 blackout the accuracy you need, as well as helping to open up expanding projectiles if you wanted to take this gun out for hunting. Having a short barreled 300 blackout gun without a 1 in 5 twist rate is like having a 4 cylinder Mustang. It may look good, but there's nothing under the hood. I will be 100% honest with you, if the Paladin did not have a 1 in 5 twist rate, I would have never given it a second look. That's how important the twist rate is. On top of having the correct twist rate, the Q barrel has the SIG taper on the end to better align with compatible silencers like the Q Nelson series and any of the CGS cans. And interestingly enough, Dead Air has just come out with an adapter for their Nomad cans for this barrel cut. The Q barrel also has an adjustable gas block that is held on with a nut. Just everything is done right. To have a great gun, you have to have a great barrel, and in my opinion, GQ Armory got the best. Currently, GQ Armory is using a Midwest Industries rail, and I actually think that this is effective. It's lightweight and strong. However, the guys at GQ are always trying to make their product better, and in the very near future, they will have carbon fiber handguards that will actually shave a little bit more weight off the Paladin, and it'll be cool because they'll be carbon fiber. The receiver set is custom made by GQ and weight has been shaved everywhere to make them as light as possible. Yet they have been able to include things like a right hand side bolt release, a feature that I'm a huge fan of, and an absolutely massive magazine well. They're also constructed out of 7075 aircraft grade aluminum and type 3 hard coat anodized giving them a beautiful yet strong finish. 
You may be able to buy a 7075 ambidextrous receiver set, but it won't be anywhere near as light as the receiver set the GQ is using. The trigger is theirs as well, and it's pulling at a very crisp three pounds on my scale with a nice short reset. Can't ask for much more than that. In addition to having the right side bolt release, there's also a very nice oversized magazine release. Basically, all the controls on the Paladin function like a dream. GQ is using a Wilson Combat Grip, and at first I was kind of scratching my head about that. And that's because I never actually held one. The texture is like that of a custom stippled Glock, and it just feels absolutely amazing in the hand. Moving back, GQ is using the SB Tactical HB PDW brace. This brace is designed by Q and is an adaption of the Honey Badger brace for a standard AR-15. This means that the GQ Armory Paladin will hinge open like a normal AR. It also means that you can use normal recoil springs buffers and you can also use JP Silent Capture buffers if you prefer. All things that you can't do with the Honey Badger and its proprietary recoil system. The brace is exceptional, quality is top notch, and it feels well built. I also like how tight the rails hug the receiver. Makes you feel like it was purpose built together and not just a one size fits all answer. There are also two adjustments for length of pull, just like the Nevesky. Inside, you'll find a Radian Raptor SD charging handle. If you're not familiar with the Radian Raptor, I'd like to welcome you back to the world from the coma you've been in. These are probably the best charging handles you can buy. They're ambidextrous, and the SD model features these vents to help keep gases away from the shooter when shooting suppressed. The bolt has a lightweight carrier and a thin, dense chrome finish. This does a couple things for you. First, the lightweight carrier will lower recoil a bit, making the Paladin an even smoother shooting gun, and the thin, dense chrome is a super slick finish that will help reliability and make the bolt easier to clean, which is always a good thing when you're running suppressed. Let's talk about accessories, but all you're going to need is a silencer and an optic because the Paladin comes ready to go right out of the box. Being that the Paladin is such a great 300 blackout gun, we of course had to try several silencers with it. We use the Dead Air Primal and this is a great multi-caliber can and it sounds great with 300 blackout subsonic. The quietest silencer we used was the Dead Air Nomad LTI. This can is crazy lightweight and crazy quiet. But the cool thing about shooting 300 Blackout Subsonic is that you don't need a huge can to make it sound good. We used the CGS Helios QDTI, and this was a great can for the size versus performance, meaning that you get great sound suppression given the smaller size of the can. This is an amazing silencer and a great pairing with the Paladin. The big surprise for me was the YHM R9. This is a very impressive can, and even given its small size, it actually sounds really good on 300 Blackout. This gave us the most compact configuration of any of the cans we tried, and it still sounded great. The optic that we are using is the Primary Arms Micro Prism Cyclops Gen 2, and I am a huge fan of this sight. It has an etch reticle so that you have a reticle whether or not the sight is powered on. It also has generous eye relief and the ACSS reticle, giving you some bullet drop reference. We will have full videos on all of the stuff coming soon, so stay tuned. When GQ Armory set out to make the Paladin, they wanted to get as close to the Honey Badger's length and weight as possible. So how they do? The Paladin is just over half an inch longer and weighs virtually the same as the Honey Badger. I'd say that's pretty darn close, especially given the features the Paladin has and the ability to hinge open. When you're looking at 300 blackout guns, really, in my opinion, there's only a couple you can seriously consider. Rule out everything without a 1 in 5 twist, and you'll see the real contenders. But I definitely think the Paladin needs some serious consideration. It offers an impressive feature set that is unique to the Paladin. Everyone who got to shoot the Paladin while we were reviewing it absolutely loved it, and that's from a group of guys who get to shoot some pretty impressive firearms. It has features designed with the suppressed shooter in mind, from the 1 in 5 barrel to the Raptor SD charging handle, and even the bolt that has a coating making it easier to clean. 
While 300 Blackout is a fairly light recoiling round, the lightweight bolt makes it even lighter, and that combined with the great trigger, right side bolt release, and other improved controls make the Paladin a true pleasure to shoot. While we didn't do any hardcore accuracy testing, we were able to hit targets at 200 yards standing, and I didn't have any issues hitting targets at 300 with no magnification. That tells me that the accuracy is right where I want it to be. The brace is exceptional and far better than I thought they could make it, and the gun as a whole just feels tight and exudes quality. The Paladin is an amazing 300 blackout gun. Is it my favorite one? Well, that's a tough call, but I will say being able to hinge it open like a regular AR is very nice. And when you don't really feel like you're making any sacrifices anywhere else, coupled with some other small improvements, makes the Paladin a very attractive offering. Guys, thank you so much for watching, and a huge thank you goes out to Callaway Ballistics. 300 Blackout doesn't exactly grow on trees, and if it wasn't for them, we couldn't have made this video and run as much 300 Blackout through the Paladin as we did. So be sure to go check them out. And guys, if you're not subscribed to the channel, I really don't know what you're doing with your life, but go ahead and hit that subscribe button right now, because as always, we've got some really big reviews and videos in the works. And if you want to know what those reviews are way before they hit the YouTube channel, check us out on Instagram and Facebook, and there you can see what's being reviewed in real time. If you like what you see here on the channel and you want to help support Alabama Arsenal, the best possible way to do that is through Patreon. These videos can be surprisingly expensive to make, and every little bit helps and is greatly appreciated. There's also Alabama Arsenal gear available right below the video if you want to go out and represent. And as always guys, thank you so much for watching.